What's up, guys? Welcome to local band Smokeout. Smokeout. Any genre from, from anywhere in the entire world. I, I want to hear your music. I can, sir. I appreciate you being here. Silhouette down to the building! Give me a hell yeah! Yes! Dude, I appreciate you taking some time out of your day to do this. Do me a favor first. Please properly introduce yourself. Let me know whereabouts in the world you are right now. Plug and promote anything and everything. All right. Well, I am Dead Dreams of Silhouette Death. Uh, I am the Reaper. Uh, you can find me on pretty much any streaming platform in uh, anywhere from, uh, you know, YouTube to Amazon. So, and anything in between. Now I'm located in colorful Colorado. Colorful Colorado, Denver. nice. Denver. Oh, so the one of the more legal marijuana states. Smoke weed every day. I, I believe. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Dude, who makes who makes your mask? Um, this one I bought, but I uh I've been getting into mask making a lot again. Uh, I've had several different variations throughout the years that I've started this project. So, Hell yeah, yeah. I, I read on on your Spotify that you've been making music since 2006. Been probably in and out of bands, I would imagine, as a vocalist. When w before we dive into that, who made you want to be like a vocalist in general? Just pick up the microphone and, and just scream, sing what have you like what artists when you were way younger inspired you that much um the beginning i would say there was actually two two artists uh scooter ward from cold and uh jay gordon from orgy oh yeah so uh and and jay jay was in the news recently leaking some lincoln park news way way in advance but uh yeah that that's uh, I know I know those two artists very well. Well, not very well, but I'm definitely familiar with their music. How did you link up with with Solunar and Caleb? So that uh, about four years ago when I started Silhouette Death, actually five now. Um, in a, I was part of a company that shall not be named because of several reasons and fallouts, but uh, we hooked up through there. Um, and you know, met Patrick from Seas. I was gonna mention him there. Pat's awesome. Yeah. That's our buddy. So, and then uh, yeah, basically hooked up with Caleb and Blood of the Beloved, and we started uh, doing a podcast and we're actually a web show because this was like during the pandemic time. So all of us would get together once a week and bullshit. That is crazy, dope, dude. Uh, were you prepped ahead of time about all the madness that goes down on this show regarding trivia and, and hot sauce and all that fun stuff? So I've actually been following your show for about three years now, so I came prepared. Yes, I appreciate you, dude. Thank you for, for watching, and and that, that is cool. We'll, we'll get there in a bit. Um, I do want to ask you some more some more questions before we do uh, get to that point. What can we what can we expect from, from you uh, regarding the rest of 2024 uh, as far as releases and or singles to look forward to anything along the lines of that so so far um, I just finished playing skull fest uh, here in the springs Sunday uh, the plan is to do a show every other month uh, release wise I have a pure electronic album coming out called uh, galvanic which will be out June 18th. Uh, I've already started working on another album, which I plan on releasing by Halloween, hopefully. And then I got a couple other things in the works uh, as far as uh, collaborations go, kind of like Wraith was. So, when you say busy. when you say pure electronic, like no vocals, just just like a ED, like a darker EDM style album, or yep, exactly. Is that something you've ever done before, or, or and why go um, why go that direction to do that? It was more along the lines of I wanted a break and kind of like uh, I wanted to go back to where I started producing music wise back, you know, 
when I first started. Um, I did have an EDM group called 13 with my buddy uh, Marius, but that kind of faded into obscurity. Um, you know, when uh, you just find yourself complacent in life at certain times, so you kind of fade away from music. But with the past four years, I've been doing nothing but releasing stuff every year. And I wanted to kind of go back to the roots of, you know, the darker EDM dance music, just to, like, throw everybody a curveball, because nobody expects that, you know? I, I love it. I love it. Uh, just just experimenting, opening the wheelhouse, doing things outside the box. Chad is going crazy about the Ghostbusters Ecto-1 car you have to your right. Uh, are you a big <laughs> Ghostbusters fan? Have you seen Fro the the new one, the Frozen Frozen Empire? Empire, I have. Um, I'm a huge fan. If I actually turned my camera to stage left, like the whole wall is nothing but Ghostbuster shit. What'd you think of Frozen Empire? I thought it was awesome. I liked it. You know, it got a lot of hate from fans, like older fans. You know. I'm an old G. I was, you know, born in that time. Mm. So I liked it. You know, I love the continuation of the story. I mean, I've been following it closely. It's already on digital out today. Out today? It's made, yeah. Pretty much it's made about $195 million worldwide. They so it's, so it's, in the, it's in the profit now, because I know it didn't do very well yeah. when it opened up, but when we, me and my sons watched it, we thought it was awesome. We loved the one prior with Paul Rudd and the rest of the cast, but it, and I, we love the girl Ghostbuster movie. That's how much we love Ghostbusters in this house. The female so cast. We like the 2016. We like all of them. Well. We don't. We don't care. Yeah. We we see ghosts getting busted. We're in. Give me a hell yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what what would you like to pick as your trivia topic? Any movie or TV show that you feel you've seen the most? I'm going to look up trivia on this. If I stump you, you do a swig of hot sauce. If not, whether you get it right or wrong, I'm going to do hot sauce regardless. But it's more fun if we have you chat while your mouth's on fire. Well, let's do uh, GB84, Ghostbusters 84. So the OG, OG first one. Yep. Okay. I need some uh, a, a, a second to look up some stuff on the side. Uh, do you have any like uh, odd phobias or things that creep you out or just weird you out? Um, not much anymore. Uh, I used to uh, be scared of uh, losing the person that I was with, but that already happened. So <laughs> that uh. She was taken away way before her time. That's actually after that year I started Silhouette Death. So there's really nothing anymore, unfortunately. I'm sorry, man. I, I wasn't appreciate trying, it. I wasn't trying to go that direction, but uh, I I feel you. Times we dealt yeah, we're I dealt mean, certain cars. Sometimes we just gotta you know. Unfortunately, art is made out of tragedy and. I made that tragedy out of art, so. I like that. I like the way you word that right there. Let's turn it around. Let's turn the frowns upside down, have some fun, and I'm going to attempt to stump you right here on some Ghostbusters trivia, and it's going to be hard. All right. Let's see what you got. In Ghostbusters 1, the first one, what is the name of the librarian in the very beginning of the movie? Oh. I only need her first Dude. name. I only need her first name. It's only mentioned Eleanor. once. What'd you say? Eleanor? Oh, the oh, the librarian. Not the not the ghost librarian? The actual librarian that I, with oh, the okay. with the gray hair. I think is what oh. we're looking for. It doesn't it doesn't specify if it's the name of the ghost or but I have a name right here on the side. Okay. Well, I know the ghost librarian is Eleanor, but yeah. Okay, so uh, not Eleanor. So, what would be the actual librarian's name? Yep, I don't. That's a good one. I don't remember. That yeah. sucks. <laughs> Her name was Alice. <laughs> oh. Enjoy. I told you these Alice, are going to be hard. That's right. 
Because Bankman's like, Alice, are you menstruating right now? No. Yep. All right. I'm going to do Fair some enough. hot sauce, too. I got some uh, some ghostly garlic. Cheers. And I got Wide Awake from Hellbound, which is a local company. Oh, cool. I love it. I love if I can get some local hot sauce going. Are you a big hot sauce guy in general? I am. This one is uh, ghost pepper Ooh. and coffee. <laughs> yeah. Ghost pepper and coffee? Yeah. Yikes. You're, <laughs> you're in for trouble. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, when since since you did vocals all the way since 2006, I would like to say Silhouette Death is kind of like an experimental industrial metal. Jo- if I was to give you a genre, I, would you say that's fair? Yeah, it is. I what, mean... re- regarding the other projects from prior to Silhouette Death. Were you always that style, or have you bounced around into in different genres and different bands? No, it was mostly metal. Like, like um, my mentor Jay Gaiman from uh, who's now in Mind and Decision. Uh, he taught me how to scream and growl. So, when I started this, the clean aspect was never thought of. So this was more of an experiment of a little bit of everything for me. And you said his but name yeah, was you said I mean, his name was Jay, the guy that taught you how to how to scream? Yep. When when you were under Jay's apprenticeship, what what style like was he like a deathcore vocalist or like what kind of vocals was he doing that you were like practicing to incorporate into your music? Oh, uh, it was more metal. Like, um, I'm not sure if you heard of a band called Arcanium or not. That sounds familiar. Yeah. So, yeah, it was more metal-esque. Um, kind of new metal-ish, you know, around, like, Slipknot, Mudvayne. Cool. You know, yeah. Well, uh, we're going to stump you again here. How much did Ray pay for the Ecto-1? 4,800. That is correct! Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> that is <laughs> correct! Is that, <laughs> One out of two ain't bad. One out of two ain't bad. Uh, when when you when you signed with Solunar, was there were there things that you were looking for regarding what they offered you or was it just like the perfect fit? Because I feel like you are the per- perfect fit for that label because you fit what the other artists on the label sound like, in my opinion. What what was, I don't want to like, you know, pick your brain on what the the dots and the T's and the cross and the T's and stuff were in the contract, but what stood out that made you say, so Lunar is, is where I should be? Um, so that came across as uh, I wanted to be part owner of something. So the only way that I would sign, because I was strictly independent, like I wouldn't sign with anybody, wouldn't go through that, because I've dealt with that and seen enough of my friends' bands do that that got totally screwed over. So the deal was that if I wanted to sign, or if I was going to sign, I would like to own a percentage of what they were doing and really? help out with that. Yeah. Wow. That I mean that's that's a that's a fair rebuttal I suppose I would say and then it must have worked out cuz you have got yourself a home. Hell yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. What's I a mean, what is the so, a, a normal day for you like dreams? Like wake up, this is your schedule, this is what you're doing. What's a normal uh, day like for you? Normal day for me, wake up, coffee, work, because I actually have a real job. Come back from work, work on music, uh, work on band merchandise, because I make my own merch. Um, Hang out with the wife and kids. Try to, uh, you know, that's pretty much promote. How old are your kids? Uh, my wife's kids are 
13 and 15. What do they think about the the whole uh, you know mass mass thing? Do they do they attend and, and support the shows? Uh, no, it's not really their thing. <laughs> it's okay. Which, yeah, I mean, I get it. The generational gap, you know, because I'm I'm 40, so there's a gap. Like there are there is music that we both like that we go to see concerts of, but yeah, my stuff is not really their bag. So we got to get you opening a show for an artist that is in their bag. Then they're like, holy sh**, daddy's cool as a mother that, that, yeah. that... <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, is there anything that we did not discuss today that you want to touch base on as far as promoting shows in the future? Um, just something that you want us to discuss before before we let you go, sir. And I appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks for having me. I, you know, I love doing this kind of shit so uh not that i could think of i mean go uh find me on facebook like share uh check out the music videos that i have check out salunar check out blow the beloved anti-hero you know all of them so i mean i, I have, I have an oddball question are are yeah. you a sports fan and if so who are your teams uh <laughs> Not really a big sports fan anymore. No Super Bowl, um, nothing. Like I don't, I don't pay enough close enough attention to, like I see stuff through my feed. Like I know the Nuggets are in the playoff. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't. Really they're down. Care. They're down o two. By the way. Yeah, against the Timberwolves. Yeah. Yep. They're yeah, down o well, two, which is a surprise. I mean, yeah, I don't know. From what I've seen, the Timberwolves look pretty good, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was Timberwolves Celtics, which I think is no one had that on their bingo card in, in the gambling world. For but we'll see what happens. But but dreams, I appreciate your time. If it's okay with you, can I put this on YouTube tomorrow? Show some people the interview, show them your music, and uh, support any way we can. Oh, absolutely, bro! Hell yeah! Uh, I appreciate you, sir. Dreams of silhouette death. Have an awesome day. Let's go. Give me a hell yeah. Thank you, bro. Yeah. Cheers, man.